I do the same intros all the time and I feel like a robot, so I'm starting off the video like this. Welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a favorites video and I thought that this would be the perfect time because I have a good roundup of new things that I've been using over the last few months. And since it's been a few months since I've done a favorites video, I thought that this was perfect. So I've got skincare, I've got makeup, books, home decor and fashion. So I hope you like this. Let's just jump right in. Okay, so starting with skincare, the first thing that I've really been loving is the Skinny Confidential Ice Roller. I've seen this all over social media. I love Lauren Bostic. I love the podcast, The Skinny Confidential, Him and Her. And this is an ice roller that you put in your fridge or your freezer. I like to keep mine in the freezer. And then in the morning or at night, whenever you want, you just roll it on your face and it really helps to instantly de-puff the skin. I can get really puffy, especially overnight. And even just like with certain foods that I eat, I can get a little bit more inflamed. And this really does help to kind of just like soothe that down and give you just an instant little de-puff. I really been liking this and also it just feels good in the morning to add that coolness to the face, get you prepped and ready. I like to actually use this right as I'm getting ready here at my vanity for the day, like to put on my makeup. It just, I don't know, it, it helps to just give that extra little to the skin and I've really been liking it. So I feel like stuff like this always seemed a little bit gimmicky to me. Like is something like that really going to work? But between this and I also started doing gua sha in the fall, I really do notice a difference and people talk about that stuff for a reason. It kind of seems like what's ice really gonna do or something cool on the face really gonna do. And it's one of those things that you kind of just have to try it and see and then you'll know. So I've really been loving this um, and I kind of want to get her, they're like little roller balls. It looks like a sex toy, but it's to help. It's, it's kind of like in place of something like a gua sha. I'm sure you can use them in, conjun in, in conjunction with each other, but it kind of just helps to sculpt the face as well. But it's just so cute. I love her branding. It's so cute. I don't know if you, well, obviously you notice I'm wearing hot freaking pink, but I have just been loving color lately. I'm such a neutral, person. I like my whole house is black and white. I love shades of neutrals, um, shades of browns and something with right now, I'm just so ready for spring. So I'm just channeling spring right now. And anyway, her packaging has just been a, a breath of fresh air. Nobody has packaging like this and it makes me happy. It makes me smile and I enjoy using it. So check it out. I'll link it down below along with everything else in this video. Another skincare slash makeup product that I've been really loving is the Lawless Set the Stage Hydrating Soothing Primer Serum. I love this. I'm very picky with primers. It has to like really wow me. I only use probably like two primers and I switch between the two. This is now a new staple. I love it. I think the packaging is really cute. The only downside is I wish it was a little bit bigger because I've been using this since probably the beginning of the new year. So only like a month to a month and a half and I'm like halfway down. So I really like this, especially on days like if I feel extra dry, it really helps to hydrate and soothe the skin. Um, and I feel like it also kind of gives that tack so that my makeup just like sticks onto it. I've been doing my makeup a lot more recently. That was something that was not like a new year's resolution, but just something I wanted to do more going forward because I can tend to just like not wear makeup ever. And like, I'm very fine. Like I'm fine with the way that I look. I'm fine. Like going out into the world without makeup on. I have no problem with that, but it, there's something about just like prepping for the day and feeling more put together that has just made me feel really good. And I feel it hasn't necessarily made me feel more confident. That's not what it's doing. It just makes me feel good. It's kind of just like a pampering thing that I've been doing. So, um, and you would think that because this, you know, started as a makeup channel and I do makeup tips and stuff, I think because maybe because of that, I got so used to to doing makeup for work that on my off days or when I didn't have to be doing makeup, I just wouldn't do it. As this channel has like broadened into more categories and more things, it's made applying my makeup more fun for me and made it more, I think just like how everybody else in the world uses makeup. So I feel like that's probably also why I've run through this so fast is because I've actually been doing my makeup so much more frequently and it's just been a lot of fun. I've been doing the same boring everyday look, but it still just makes me feel really good. So 
Yeah, I've been liking this primer. Two makeup brushes that are old favorites of mine that I've started to reintroduce into my makeup routine are these bougie ass brushes from Tom Ford. This is the bronzer brush, this is the blush brush. They're so nice. I totally forgot about them. I didn't even have them in my brush container that I leave out here. I have this like little cart um, from Amazon that I just keep out because it has just like my go-to products on it. Um, and then in my closet, I have a whole set of drawers with just like back stock of makeup, which I need to go through again because I use the same stuff all the time and that stuff's just sitting there marinating, not doing anything. I was going through some of those drawers and I came across these brushes because I have a whole drawer of brushes that I don't use that much. And I started using them again and oh my gosh, they work so well. Now there are, are so many other brushes that are cheaper than this that work the same if not better but it's just really fun to rediscover old favorites and i just i really like the way that these work applies my bronzer and my blush so beautifully like very airsoft i remember back in the day when i used these brushes i got questions all the time asking if these were natural hair brushes or if they were synthetic because tom ford used to have the natural hair and then they switched to all synthetic I think I got them right in between that transition, so I actually have no idea. I'm pretty sure that I have the natural hair. The blush brush might be synthetic. It's really hard to tell because this one is a little bit softer. I'm pretty sure that this is the natural hair brush, but I believe now when you order these, you are getting the synthetic hair. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. This was a favorite of mine that I used constantly in 2019. And then I just, you know, you try new things, whatever. Then this product blew up on TikTok and it has been sold out pretty much ever since. And I've been wanting, oh, I've got a niche. I've been really wanting to replenish my old one because I haven't used it since I ran out and I haven't been able to get my hands on it. Finally, out of nowhere, it was in stock on Nordstrom's website. So I ordered it and it came in and I've been using it all week long and I've been loving it. <sighs> So much hype. This is the contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury. I have it in the light medium shade, which is perfect for my skin complexion. Yeah, all the TikTok makeup girlies have been talking about this apparently. I haven't used it in years. I mean, I can't believe that 2019 was four years ago. Was it not last year? Come on, like 2019 was last year, it feels like. Um, so yeah, it's been four years since I've used this. I love it. So I had been using the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer in the pan. I don't know where, I don't know why, but that formula kind of just like stopped working with my skin. It just wasn't laying right and the makeup on top of it was kind of laying a little blotchy, but it didn't do that at first. So I don't know. I think sometimes you just get used to products. So anyways, I was curious if this was going to do the same thing or if I was going to love it. It is working so well with my skin. I feel like I could wear this without wearing any other makeup. Like if I just wanted a little bit of bronzeness and a little bit of contouring to my skin and then wanted to go throughout the day without wearing any other makeup, I feel like I could do that with this product because it just looks so natural. It's been making my nose contour like, like so easy and snatched and I, I'm loving this. So I'm gonna have to do like a makeup tutorial soon because I've been loving the way that this looks, the way that it applies. And I'm so glad that I got my hands on it. I have no idea if you're interested in this product. I have no idea if you're gonna be able to get your hands on it because I've been trying to buy this for like a year. I mean, I haven't tried that hard, <laughs> but anytime I have looked, it's been out of stock. So um, yeah loving this. So I tried a new skincare product. I have finally decided that I am ready to just take care of my skin. Um, I've been really like, I don't want to say lazy, but I've just been very simple with my skincare routine. I use the same makeup remover, same cleanser. And then I just use like a moisturizer. Sometimes I'll use a serum, but sometimes that's it. And it's always the same products. Um, and I figured, you know what? It's time to start taking care of my skin. I feel like within the last year, I've noticed the most changes with my skin. I'm now 31 and I feel like, um, I feel, I, I'm happy with the way that I'm aging. I'm comfortable with seeing lines and things like that, but I just wanna take care of it and preserve it and age just gracefully. So I figured it was time to incorporate a retinol and an exfoliator. So if you want a skincare routine, I will do that soon, but it's gonna be um, 
kind of like a week long thing because I started skincare cycling, which I learned from my friend Amanda and I learned from the Summer Fridays website, um, which brings me to this product. I've been loving the Summer Fridays um, Midnight Ritual Retinol. I've been using this for I, literally since it came out. I think it was like the day after it came out, I went and I bought it. So basically what skincare cycling is, is I will put the picture on the screen that was on Summer Fridays Instagram page. Basically, you'll do one night you'll do your retinol. The next night you'll do like a hydrating serum. You'll do the same thing the night after that. And then you'll do an exfoliator the night after that. And then you start the cycle all over again. It's kind of like a four night process. So I've been doing that and I really like the way that my skin has been looking. I feel like it's been looking um, hydrated. It's been looking youthful. Also probably because I've been doing more to it to like you know, help it out a little bit. So that's been helpful. I feel like I've had such a simple routine for so long that it was finally time to start incorporating more into it. So I, I will be doing that video soon. Um, but yeah, it will have to be like a four night process and then show you what I do in the morning because in the morning I do the same thing every single time. So random, I've really been loving my nails. I got a French manicure. If you saw my glow up video that I just posted, I'll link it up here. Um, I got my nails done in that video and I got French and I feel so bougie, fancy with this French manicure. And I don't even know why that did that to me, but from going forward, I just want to get this done to my nails. And it just looks so just, I just feel so feminine with this, with these nails. I get a lot of questions on what I get done to my nails. And lately I've, for the last year, I've been doing a no chip manicure. Now, some people call it gel, I think, but pretty much all, all that it is, is when you get your nail polish off, you have to soak it off. And then when she does the nails, you have to put it in the light every time. And then when she's done, she rubs it with alcohol or whatever. That's what it is. It's not acrylic, it's not dip. My nail salon calls it no chip. I think you can also call it gel. It kind of just depends. But um, I also get what my nail salon calls a strengthening no chip manicure. All that means is that the base coat that she's putting on is a little bit thicker. So it legit, it feels like acrylics, maybe a little softer than acrylics, but it's not as damaging as acrylics. At the end of the day, anything you put on your nails is going to be damaging just because you're putting something on your nails. Yeah, that's how it was explained to me. So I'll actually, I'll link the strengthening base coat down below in case you wanna check it out, in case you wanna purchase it, bring it to your nail tech. That has made such a big difference in my nails and now my nails are just long AF and they just remain this length. And I think too, going every two to three weeks to get my nails done has really helped to keep them long, strong, and down to get the friction off. I should use a cuticle oil that's been on my, like I keep telling myself that every other day and then I don't do it. Um, I have it downstairs. It's just like in a little brush to keep them hydrated, especially in the cold weather. So I'm gonna do that after I'm done filming and put that on because that's something that I need to do that can also help with um, the longevity of your manicure. I said manicure. <laughs> uh, the long gen la, 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 longevity of your manicure and also help them stay long, strong, and all that kind of stuff. Moving on to books. I read, I think, five books over the month, so I kind of just wanted to go over them really quickly. Um, please let me know for books, because I've just been really getting into books, obviously, and I was thinking I could just pop them into favorites videos or do a dedicated video on the books that I read during the month and give you kind of a roundup of them. Let me know your thoughts. So today I'm just gonna include it in the favorites video, but you let me know going forward if you'd like that to be separate because I know some people don't like books, some people do like books and they don't like makeup and you know, all the things. Um, also, before I even get into that, thank you for all the love on the books and makeup looks video that I posted. I just, I don't know, I feel like it just feels so fresh to me. I'm really excited about it and it's kind of just giving me like this new, I don't know how to explain it, but it just feels really good. So thank you so much for all of the positive feedback. I'm so glad you guys are loving that idea. I'm almost halfway through my next book and I'll be doing a books of makeup looks video on that. Now, not every book that I read will become a books and makeup looks video. It just has to 
it has to be the right book. You know what I mean? So if there's a video that, or if there's a book that you want me to read to do a books and makeup looks video on, please let me know down below. I already have like a decent sized list of the ones that I do want to do, but I want to know what you guys want as well. So let me know that below. Okay. Getting into the books that I've read this month, I actually read a lot of audiobooks, so I guess I just listened to them. And I've been meaning to get a library card because then I can get them for free and just listen to them via my local library. Because there's something about buying an audiobook that pisses me off. I I feel like, I just feel like you should also get the book in your hands and then pay a fee to get the audiobook or something. I don't know, but anyways. So the first book that I listened to was Eat That Frog. It's kind of like a self-help motivational book. It was very very quick. I think the whole thing was like four hours long. And to be honest, I liked it. I thought it had really good information, but it's a lot of like the same information that you hear over and over again, which I think that this was one of the more original books, if I remember correctly. If you love self-help motivational type books to help you be productive and stop being lazy and just, you know, all the things, check it out. You'd like it. It's a quick, it's a quick listen. It's a quick read you like it. And then another self-help book that I listen to that I think for me is my most favorite one that I've ever listened to is The Power of One More by Ed Milet. I love his, I love his podcast. I love watching his YouTube videos. I think um, at like any time that he's interviewed or has something to say, I learn something. There's this video, I'll link it down below. It was kind of like, a light bulb moment for me and I go back and I re-watch re this video all the time and it's all about confidence and how to build your confidence. And in that video, he talks about how a way to boost your confidence is to set goals for yourself, but then follow through with them because then you learn to trust yourself and you build that confidence off of that trust. It made so much sense to me and I looked back at times where I felt more confident in my life and then times when I, I wasn't as confident and it's because of that example. And it just made so much sense to me. He has a great way of speaking. Um, he also, one another thing that I learned from him, not from this book, but what I've learned from interviews from him was when you're in a conversation with somebody, it's very easy to start talking about yourself. Even if you don't mean to make it about yourself, it's very easy to like want to relate to somebody and be like, oh yeah, like I know what you're going through because I blah, 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 blah. He talks a lot about letting someone speak and just sit and listen and responding to what they say without making it about yourself. And I've learned, it's a really hard habit to break because in my head, I think, oh, I want them to know that like, I'm, I'm right there with you, I understand, but it ends up, coming across as all you want to do is talk about yourself. So that's another little nugget that I've learned from him. But yeah, this book was amazing. I love that he incorporated his faith. I love the scriptures that he did provide because they were ones that I didn't know about. I have never heard before and really supported the things that he was talking about. And so I just love how he brought that all together. I think no matter what your faith is, I think that you, you would really love it. Um, also, that's not like the whole thing of the book. Those are just little things sprinkled in that I found value in. Um, but, oh, what was the, right at the beginning of the book, he talked about something and it is literally slipping my brain. I can't think about it. I wish that I could remember. Um, anyway, it's been my favorite self-help book so far that helps with procrastination, self-confidence, and just trying to be the best version of yourself and also to like work hard and get the things done that you wanna get done. So I really love it. It's my favorite. I can't wait to listen to it again. I'm probably gonna listen to it again very soon because I just feel like I zipped through it in like two days. So loved, loved that book. Another one that I read obviously was Daisy Jones and the Six. I listened to that one actually. If you want a full review on that, check out my Books and Makeup Looks video. That's the first, book that I did that video on. The heat just turned on, perfect. So check that out if you're curious. It's basically about the rise and fall of a band in the 70s. Um, it is a fiction novel, so none of the people are real, but Taylor Jenkins Reid has a way of making you feel like those people are real. Um, just like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, like all I wanted to do was like look up everything, but it doesn't exist. And they are making a show on it on Amazon Prime coming out March 3rd, I cannot wait. Um, so yeah, that's another book that I read. 
this month that I really enjoy. Two more books. Most of these I listen to actually, it's just so much easier for me to listen to the book than it is to sit down and actually read it. The other one I listened to was the memoir by Jeanette McCurdy. This one was all about um, just her childhood and growing up and being on TV, being on Nickelodeon and everything that she went through. Um, I wanted to give that preface before I say the name of the book because the, the name of the book is like, what? A lot of the book has to deal with her relationship with her mom and the abuse that happened between her and her mom and just how um, abuse can show up in a way that you don't necessarily hear about all the time. She talks a lot about her eating disorder. So just, you know, that's kind of like at the forefront of a lot of scenarios in this book. Um, she talks about how there was issues working at Nickelodeon. I think a lot of us have heard a lot about that and shit's just creepy. But um, yeah, the name of her book is I'm Glad My Mom Died. That title really caught my attention and I wanted to know more about it. So I looked into more about like, why was this book titled that? What is this all about? It was just a really good read. It was very interesting and I love her humor. I like when people go through really hard, difficult things, but they can come out on top and, and have a good sense of humor from it. Um, my sister and I talk about things like from our childhood that like were pretty messed up and we just, you don't gotta laugh, but sometimes it's just, maybe that's just a coping mechanism. I don't know, but I really like uh, the way that Jeanette wrote this book, it's very just, it's very herself. It's not like, um, like a typical author writing something. I don't know. Her personality really came through the book and I really enjoyed the read. So keep in mind, there is a lot of talk about eating disorders and intrusive thoughts types of things. If you're okay with hearing about that stuff, I would definitely check it out. And then I read another book last month that also has a lot of intense themes is The Butterfly Garden by, oh, I think the author's name is Dot Hutchinson. Um, this book also is, I would say, heavier, like, like heavier topics. There's, the whole book is about assault. This whole book was like I was reading a Criminal Minds episode. It's about this girl who gets kidnapped and she's held in this like atrium that they call the garden. And she and the other like 20 to 50 women that are captured are like the butterflies. Then there's the gardener and he um, is a very bad guy. He's a very bad man and does everything you think. So warning, there is S.A in this so if that is something that you can't read i wouldn't recommend you read it yeah just very it's very criminal mindsy so if you like that sort of not that you like that but if you're interested in that sort of thing um you'd probably really like the book the only downside of this book that i didn't like was there were no chapters so i found it so difficult to get through it just felt like one run-on sentence and Anytime I put like my bookmark in the book, I, it was hard for me to remember where I even stopped because there's no like break points. I am flying through the book that I'm reading right now because there's end points, there's chapters, there's pick up, pick, you know, I, I don't know. Like if I'm reading and I can see, okay, there's only three pages till the next chapter. Let me just go through this and finish this. Where on that one, it was like there was no end in sight. So um, it took me like a month to finish that book. I feel like that book would have been better had she included chapters. I didn't even think that that was something that would bother me, but apparently it is. So, um, and that might not bother everybody, but it was something with me that I, I didn't really like. Um, I am really good with guessing the endings of books. So far, like I've guessed so many different endings in a lot of the books that I've read. Um, that one I didn't guess. It wasn't, I, I was thinking more of a reveal was going to happen. So yeah, I think I rated that one like a three out of five. I do have a Goodreads account, so if you're into books and all of that, um, I rate my books that I'm reading on there so you can check them out. I also wanted to show you, currently I'm reading four books of makeup looks. I'm reading The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I'm hoping to have this video up by next Wednesday or Friday. I'm not sure what day. So if you wanna read this with me and be ready for the next books and makeup looks video, um, I will link it down below, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up on what I'm reading next. This is more of a mystery, not thriller. I don't know what the category would be. 
but more of a more of a mystery, which I, I just, I'm really liking it. So I read the guest list by Lucy Foley and I really enjoyed that. This is very, very similar. Like, I feel like I'm learning about the same family actually. Um, so her writing style is very like, it's very much the same. So um, I'm also doing a reading vlog. I've never done that before. I mean, I've vlogged while I'm reading before, but I've never done like a reading vlog where I give my thoughts in between and what I'm thinking and stuff like that. And I've watched quite a few reading vlog videos on YouTube and I was like, you know what? That would be really fun. So that's what I'm doing for this book as well. So first the books and makeup looks video will go up and then the reading vlog will come out after. So you can hear all my thoughts in the middle of reading and all of that. And I thought that, I thought that would be really fun. This is a notebook that I got from Target that I think that I'm gonna end up using this for church um, cause it's smaller, but I thought this was gonna be great for taking notes for books and makeup looks, but I am only on, let's see, page 120. So I'm only this far into the book. I've got this much left, so not even halfway. And I have one, two, three full pages of notes so far. So I'm gonna have to get a bigger notebook because that's just a little crazy. If I had a bigger notebook, it'd probably only be like two pages front and back once I'm done. So I think once I'm done with doing the Paris apartment with my note taking, I will end up using this for taking notes at church. I finally went back to church. It's been like seven years since I've gone to church. So I finally went back and I think I'm gonna start taking notes while I'm there. So this will be a good notebook for that. I got it at Target. To conclude the reading category of this video, I wanted to share my eyeglasses. Anytime I wear these glasses, you guys wanna know where they're from. So they're from Dolce & Gabbana and I will put the number down below. They're very old. I got these years ago years and years and years ago. So they're no longer sold like from Dolce & Gabbana and like from, I got them from Macy's, but I did find a website last time I checked that did sell these. I just don't know like if it's a reputable website. I'll link it down below and I'll put the style number so you can check it out and see if you can find anything online. But um, so far that's the only place that I've been able to find them. They used to be on Amazon too, but <laughs> No longer. I really like them too. I think that they fit my face really well and um, they are a prescription. I get questions on that too for some reason. Um, I have astigmatism and I am noticing some other things changing with like things getting a little blurry. Super fun. Um, so yeah, I do use them. I just mainly use them when I'm looking at a screen, if I'm driving, especially at, I can't drive if I don't have these at night. Um, and then sometimes if I'm tired and I'm reading a book, I'll use that too. So I guess we're not done with books. I wanted to show you that I have been using my vision board as my bookmark. And you guys really like that. I posted it on Instagram and you guys were like, oh my God, I want to do that too. So here is a vertical version of my vision board. It just shows like happy, healthy, hot bitches. I've got a kickboxing chick down here, a girl flipping off the camera. Cause like that represents like, I don't give a fuck energy. Um, working out, healthy food, podcasting. That is just like a huge goal of mine for this year. At some point, I really wanna start up my podcast, um, book reading, and then cute vibey pictures because I love that for like work and stuff. So yeah, it's just inspiring. I have this as my bookmark. And then I also have a horizontal version printed out and I got it framed. <laughs> it just sits in here. Um, on this one, I do have more um, pictures of the same things. People talk about like putting inspiration pictures and quotes and words around your house and stuff like that. I like that too and maybe I'll do that one day with like post-its and stuff but this to me was just very beautiful and so I got it framed. This frame I think was like five dollars at Target and I just let it sit here in my creative space, in my creative room so I could see this. So it's never too late to start a vision board or to set goals. Don't don't let the new year and like the pressure of the new year be like the only time you feel like you need to do that. I wanna reevaluate my goals like once a month and see like where I'm at, what I'm, what's going on, what do I wanna do, what do I wanna achieve? And I feel like having this out as a reminder and having it in my book as a reminder of like what my intentions are and what my goals are and the person that I wanna be, it just helps me to stay on track with those things and inspire me to like be the person that I wanna be. So. 
don't let the pressure of the new year be like the only time that you feel like you can do that. Do it right now. If that's something that you have been wanting to do and then maybe you didn't do it in, in January 1st or the first week of the new year, don't let that set you back and make, and make you feel like you can't do it now. Do it on a random Tuesday in March, you know, it doesn't matter. So um, I hope that that inspires you to just, you do you, do your, you know, if you've got goals that you wanna achieve, you can achieve them right now. Get started right now, not tomorrow morning, right now. So those having those there really helps me kind of keep on that mindset. Another home decor thing that I've been loving is just getting fresh flowers. I do this mainly in like spring and summer, but once I took down my Christmas decorations, it looks so naked in my house and buying fresh flowers once a week has just brought me so much joy. These are just some flowers from my my grocery store. And then this vase is from CB2. I'll link it down below. It's so beautiful. But, oh, these are so fragrant too. I keep these on my coffee table and when I sit down on the couch, I can actually smell them. Oh, they're just so beautiful. It's like bringing life into your home, bringing color into the home. I've just been obsessed with color. Normally when I would buy flowers, I would buy white flowers, which I have some white roses downstairs as well. But there's something about just this pop of color that just Ah, it brings so much life into the house, into my day, especially when it's just so gray and gloomy outside. Like it's so rainy right now. I'm trying to like liven up this winter and bring the spring <laughs> vibes. So that's just been really making me happy. It's making, it's, it really has been boosting my mood. I don't know. Last but not least is my coat. I have been wearing this like crazy. This is from the brand Mango. I got this in a size medium. It fits perfectly. It's the perfect oversized comfy fit. I can wear a sweatshirt under this or a regular shirt. I'll put pictures in with me wearing this, but I have found this coat makes me feel like that bitch. It's so funny, you guys ask me for outfit videos all the time. Can I tell you, I legit, I'm not I'm not kidding. I legit wear the same thing every single day. I wear leggings and a black long sleeve. I have multiples of leggings that look the same and multiple long black long sleeves. I wear the same thing. And if I'm not wearing that, I'm wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. The key is earrings and this coat. You wear a sweatshirt and sweatpants and you put on like a like a puffy coat, you're gonna look more sporty. You put on this, you're gonna look so fancy, so bougie, like you've got like you've got your shit together. That's at least how I feel. When I put this coat on, I'm like, what problems? I've got everything put together. And then with my French manicure, I'm like, but all I'm wearing is like athletic wear underneath. So legit, this coat has made me feel just really put together during the winter, especially in the winter. I just feel normally, I just feel like blah and like who even cares about fashion because it's just cold and I'm just trying to get through it. This is warm, but it's still lightweight, but like it really boosts my outfit and it like it is the outfit so um i will link it below i actually posted uh like a like to know it post over on my ltk if you want to check that out too i'll link that below as well so i think that that's everything for this video those are all the things that i've been really loving lately at least for the last month even longer for some of them um but they're things that i use almost every day and have been bringing me a lot of joy especially in the winter i just feel like it's so hard to just just to keep a happy mindset and keep, you know, whatever in the winter, it can just feel so dreary and blah. And these are the little things that have helped to make me feel good and help to make me feel pretty. And it feels good to take care of myself. And these things help with that. So I hope you guys liked this. Please share what you've been loving down below in the comment section. And please let me know what books you're interested in hearing me do a books and makeup looks on. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.